MTD CNC are in Southern Ireland today. We've travelled here to visit this company, Atlas Components, who started trading just a matter of months ago. Uh, I've come here to talk to Nicola and Lee about the reasons why they took this ambitious plunge into starting a new company. Nicola, one of the best things about uh, our job is visiting companies like yourself, exciting stories, you've, you've just founded the business. Tell us about Atlas Components. So basically we founded the company in February of this year and we started production in August. So it was quite a short time frame from the initial decision to start the company to actually putting parts in pallets and getting them out to our customer. So we founded the company basically because there was a need in the economy in this area for precision parts for hydraulic cylinders that myself and the other co-director here, Lee, both worked in Burnside, um, which is like three minutes across the road. And they just have this massive hunger for parts because they're just growing so fast. Their growth is tremendous, isn't it? Tell us a little bit. Absolutely did you say 40% or 14%? Um, I think 14%. The cylinder market globally is growing 14% from 2017 to 2021. So you can imagine, like, that's just... And most of their, most of their customers are exports, aren't they? Yes, it's almost entirely export. I think it's 96% export. So Burnside here in Tolo are exporting across Europe to the America, to Japan, China, it's just phenomenal. That would be my question as well, really. Local, uh, the, as, as a local uh, manufacturer, they must be the heartbeat of the community, are they? They actually are. In Carlo, there's four companies, four Burnside factories making cylinders, all making the same product. But I think they're employing just over 1,000 people locally at the moment. It's, it's just fantastic to see that an Irish company can do that and support that many families. So Atlas Components was set up not just to take work from uh, the company down the road, but actually to reshore, to bring component manufacture back into Ireland. Exactly. So basically Burnside have been buying a lot of parts in Central Europe. So Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, which meant that because of the transit time, they had to buy quite large batch sizes. So our reason for being is to make smaller batches really flexible, really fast turnaround. So we literally got an order this morning that's going to be delivered tomorrow afternoon for 10 bosses because they had a shortage on an order. You also mentioned to me as well about staffing. Uh, finding skilled yeah. machinists, yeah. certainly in England, is really tough. You have the same problem here. Yeah, it's absolutely impossible to find skilled machinists, which kind of just shows how busy that area is at the moment that everybody is employed. So basically, we had to go to Romania to find machinists and now we're looking to expand and we're going to have to do the same again. That quality of supply just isn't here locally because there's a lack of training for people. You've also rented this unit here and, and you, you were telling me earlier how difficult it is to find property as well around this. Yes, that, as you can see, we have a lot of empty space in the building, which is good that we have room to grow, but it's a lot larger than what we wanted as a startup. But literally we had to take what was on offer, that the area in Tolo here is just, it's booming and this was the only building available. And that's, when you say booming, not just manufacturing, everything, everything. isn't it? Everything, yep. There's no houses available to rent in Tullow. The, the town is full. There's four supermarkets that are busy every single day. There is, it's a huge farming area. There's, you know, cattle mart here twice a week. Let's just hope there's some hotel accommodation, otherwise <laughs> we won't be able to get home tonight. Um, on, on the machine side here as yeah. well, Nicola, this is, a, this is a key part here. You, you've got to make these components that you're making. I've been told by yourself that they are very precise parts. Yeah. Tell us about your, your decision to purchase the four machines that we see here. So basically we went with two Victor 20, 326s, an S26 driven two lathe and then our machining centre. We went with these machines because I've come from Burnside, Lee has come from Burnside where these machines already are so we know they're reliable, we know we'll get consistent results, we know that they're just they're easy to use and they're workhorses that Every day you come in, turn the machine on, and it will make the same part for you. Uh, you've got two of the models that you said that are the same, the 26 yeah. HDs. But one of the points you make here about the Driven Tool S26, that's a brand new model to the range, isn't it? it? Have been impressed so far? Very impressed so far that we found not alone is it really consistent and really, it just flies through parts, but it was really easy for the guys to get their head around it because 
neither of the guys who are actually operating that machine at the moment had used a driven tool machine before. Um, first job worked. Plus it frees up our mill for other parts. Well, I was going to say to you, there is a bit of a bias here with three turning machines and one VMC. Does that mean that you are doing more turning really than milling? We are doing more turning. That milling is normally a finishing operation for us that most of our parts are, you know, they're going on cylinders, so they're round, they're turned. <laughs> and um, that the mill is, some piston heads would have hexes for tightening them or there'd be extra drilling on them. So we're trying to do as much as we can through the S26 to have a finished part come off the machine. Lee, this S26 here from Victor is the first S26 that has uh, hit the hit the UK shores. Um, I want to be I want to find out a little bit from yourself about your opinion on this machine and how it handles some of the parts that you manufacture. Yeah, well, I suppose we make such a variety of parts. We make everything from piston heads to cylinder ends, rod bosses. The milling capacity on it is great for putting spanner flats on some of our piston heads. And with that milling, do, do you notice that um, it, it's, it's pretty heavy duty, it's pretty hard wearing, you can, you can take quite uh, healthy cuts with a milling side? Yeah, when we're making spanner flats, we're, taking, uh, we're cutting six mil deep into the face of the part and we're taking probably six mil off at the deepest point off the circle. Isn't that a, be a benefit to you, uh, a significant benefit, so you don't have to move the parts off over to a milling machine now, do you? Oh yeah, it's, every time we open the doors, we're allowing minimum 30 seconds to change a part. So if we have to put that into a different machine, it's another 30 seconds to put it in before you even talk about setups and tool setups. I mean, it sounds to me that you're crying out for a subspindle at some point here. Possibly, yeah. It's, it's an experience thing, I suppose, for ourselves. But we're, working as we are without a subspindle, it's a great machine. And, and tell me about the, what you're trying to achieve with these components, the mirror finish, the surface finish, and the tolerance. Yeah, on the piston heads especially, mirror, near enough mirror finish, 1.6 RA, is that needs to be achieved consistently for sealing surfaces. How do you achieve that? Is it just the machine, or are you working collaboratively with tooling suppliers as well? Um, we work with the local tooling suppliers. We probably have a tooling rep on site nearly every week. They've helped us with tools, but it's the rigidity of the machine that really helps us achieve consistency on the surface finish. Uh, and have you used, do you use the HD, the, the 26 HD as well? You find the same with that? I know that's just a turning machine. Yeah, yeah, the, the Victor brand just seems to have that ruggedness, that the stability for taking heavy cuts. It's Built to last, I think, is a good word. The, the, the P76, that's a new model from them on their vertical machining centres. Uh, again, on the milling side, does that give you the same stability there for your milling operations? Yeah, it does. It's perfect for what we're doing. We're milling hexes on some of the bigger piston heads. It's cutting blocks there at the minute. It's able to handle anything we've thrown at so far. What about the operating and the programming of the machines? Are you all proficient now? You had your training? Yeah, we were over in Victor in Manchester, so we're, they gave us the, all the training we needed. So we find the, the FANUC controller is very easy to use, very easy to program. The shift patterns that you're doing here, still very early days, but are you working these machines hard? We're working them as hard as we can at the moment. So as we were saying earlier, it's just so busy at the moment, just in the economy in general, which means that we actually don't have enough power supply to run the machines 24 hours like we need. So we're running on a generator at the moment, which means we have to switch the generator off at 8 p.m. So once our electricity is upgraded, the plan is 24-7. Yeah, okay. and, and going. And with that here, I mean, this unit, you've, you've, you're probably 25% full, if less than that, aren't you? Yes. Is your intention, therefore, to, to fill the rest of this unit with similar types of machines? 100%, yeah. That next year, we're looking at adding in a subspindle machine, maybe gantry fed, and just automate our process a little bit more and then further down the line when we've more experience with programming to put robots onto machines so that we can just get as much out of the machines as we can because we know they can work harder. Uh, was there any doubt in your mind when you purchased these was there any anxieties worries about whether the machines were going to come in on time hit the deck work? I have to admit there was a little bit of anxiety would they be in on time because we knew the S26 was a new machine so that hadn't hit the warehouse in the UK that had to come straight from Taiwan and there was a slight shipping delay but these things happen but the B26 HDs we knew they'd work we have these machines in Burnside they're older than me and they're still turning out parts consistently so we had no doubts.
Well, maybe we'll come back in a year or so's time when you've got more machines in here to ha have a bit of an update. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nicola. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you.